It's an easy thing to believe that Bethlehem was always a vibrant, livable, exciting city filled with arts, culture, dining, recreation and business attractions. The mid-1990s, however, did not guarantee such a promising future. You tend to think it always was like this. You know, it just wasn't always like this. Knowing what we know now about downtown Bethlehem and what a destination is, you can't even really imagine that 15 or 20 years ago, there really wasn't a whole lot of reason to be there after five o'clock in the evening. There was always this paternalistic element of Bethlehem Steel would take care of the big things. If we needed a new bridge, if we needed a new roadway, it was gonna be Bethlehem Steel's money, it was gonna be Bethlehem Steel's leadership. It was just a matter of time till that star was gonna completely fade out. When the city's fate hung in the balance, two young leaders with the commitment, the passion, and the will set Bethlehem on a path of change and became the authors of the Bethlehem story. Cunningham, elected at 31 years old, stabilized city finances and began the process of rebuilding a city in decline. You know, I got elected at 31 after having been on council for only a couple of years. Uh, I don't think that would have happened under normal, stable times. It was such a period of change. I was sworn in in January and it was March of 98 that Steele announced they were closing the cold shop. The biggest thing in 1998 was to create a sense of optimism about tomorrow when a lot of people never thought the day was going to come when steel was gone. Let's not just build museums and relics to yesterday. We can celebrate our history, but we have to create a new future. That was the beginning of we need to redevelop. What Don brought was an energy and a desire to move the community forward. During my time in office, we really had a two-pronged approach. There was the 1,800 acres of steel land, four and a half miles along the river on the south side, that was gonna take some time. But we had the north side downtown, and at that time, the Old Ores department store was closed. Broad Street was a failed pedestrian mall. Broad and Main was a gravel parking lot. The hotel was mothballed because the owners went into bankruptcy. So we had to preserve the hotel as a hotel, first and foremost. We knew the old department store had to become alive again. We needed the street to be alive after five o'clock, which meant we needed restaurants, bars. We found some developers willing to invest in the downtown. We found some good partners to get money to open up that street. And we built a parking garage in concert with Liberty Property Trust to do the Liberty Center. We got the downtown moving the right way. While revitalizing Bethlehem's downtown was the first focus, Cunningham also knew the key to the city's future was bringing new life to the vacant Bethlehem steel plant. And what we did was took risk and spent money to build a lot of roads to nowhere, quite frankly, easily criticized because there was nothing guaranteed but I always said to folks that we can be guaranteed that nothing will happen if we do nothing. You needed both phases of this. You needed someone to take the risk, clear the land, get the zoning in place, do the environmental work so good things were ready to happen when opportunity struck. John did a great job of really going after those opportunities and then he added to it tremendously. In 2004, John Callahan took the reins in Bethlehem and accelerated the largest brownfields redevelopment project in the country. It's interesting. It's most people that, that know Don and I think we grew up together and that, and, and that we'd been, you know, sort of uh, together from, from the beginning. But, you know, the reality is that we sort of, it was, it was you know, he running for mayor and I, I running for city council, sort of our, our paths first collided. I think it was kind of natural that you had a young mayor and a young individual on in council who both sort of saw the world the same. There was this kind of this natural alignment between the two of us and how we were going to drive change. Bethlehem Steel represented 20% of the taxable land mass of this community. There's no way you could kind of tackle it all at once. You sort of had to look at it, as I like to say, eat the elephant one bite at a time. The casino was most certainly a linchpin to driving close to a billion dollars of new investment on that site. Our plan was let's put them in a place where we want them to be and drive investment on a difficult to redevelop site and take that energy and that investment and sort of judo it onto the other parts of the site to get what we as a community want out of it. Projects like Steel Stacks, and the Levitt Pavilion, the Visitor Center, it's really become, I think, one of the most unique economic development projects in, in all of the country. Under
Callahan's administration, Bethlehem became an example for economic development professionals, urban planners, and municipal leaders to learn how to do redevelopment the right way. One of the biggest projects was the Riverport project. When you're looking at a $35 million project uh, coming at a very important time in our city's history. Talk about creativity, taking an old Bethlehem Steel machine shop and repurposing it into luxury condominiums. To me, in many ways, that's proof of concept that you can take these old buildings and repurpose them to something very special. Most of the headline grabbing has been the 180 acres between the bridges, rightfully so. But the majority of the land is the land over at 412, which is industrial commercial land. There was just as much public-private partnership and just as much leadership and investment required to make that a reality as what you see between the two bridges. So it's this perfect blend of industrial commercial with arts, entertainment, and recreation across that site. Tech Venture is somewhat isolated up on the mountain. This is an unsung hero because not only people really understand or connect the dots necessarily to what has happened with so many of the companies that have been graduates, Orishore and IQE, and the list goes on and on. And so I think they've gone a long way kind of quietly to, to continuing to make Bethlehem and present Bethlehem as a city of innovation. It's not necessarily the image that people would have of an old steel town, but I think back to when those blast furnaces were first built. They were a technological wonder in advance of their day. And so Bethlehem has always been a city of innovation, going back to the first pumped waterworks uh, here in the colonies, to the Bethlehem Steel and the, and the innovations and patents that they produced to Ben Franklin today. I knew when I ran for mayor that this was gonna be a period of great change and transformation. It had to be. What worked in the past was not gonna work for us in the future. I think we've made that transition perhaps better than any other community in the United States. And, and to have played a part and a role in that with, with so many other people has really been a wonderful experience. Any of this takes this huge partnership. I would say a mayor is basically like an orchestra conductor. If you're a good conductor, you're getting everybody playing off the same sheet of music. And if everybody's playing their part, the music sounds great. But at best, you're a conductor. Bethlehem's renaissance has been recognized nationally. A community recovered from losing its top employer to become a better place to live, work, and raise a family. The leadership, dedication, and hard work of both Don Cunningham and John Callahan has assured that the future of the city will far exceed the heights of the blast furnaces here at Bethlehem Steel. The reality is we made a better tomorrow than our yesterdays. Yeah, we built the bombs that won the Second World War and we built the skyscrapers in New York and the Golden Gate Bridges and so forth. And that's great and it's a proud part of our history. But that wasn't going to give our kids jobs in the 21st century. You know, so we had to do something in our time to provide for the next generation. And we got that done. I don't think too many people would have imagined 15 years ago that Bethlehem would be the community that it is today. I mean, to be one of the 100 best places in America to live, one of the 100 best places in America to raise a family or to start a new business. The star shines brightly today. Uh, brighter than it ever has.